Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Still not sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Happy one day. Good afternoon. Today is the 12th of November and this is part 20 of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2023 NEC Classic Car Show sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. I do apologise in advance for all the incorrect information that will inevitably come out of my mouth. I apologise if I fall over, if I get interrupted by announcements. I'm afraid it's just the way that it goes on this channel. So we're here at the uh, Cavalier and Chevette Club stand. We've got a very, very nice Cavalier Coupe. This is the uh, two-door coupe. We also made a three-door coupe called the uh, Sport Hatch, I think it was. This one's quite an early one. They came out in 75. This is a 75, 76 plate on this one. Uh, this is the uh, GL model. They had the cam in head engines, I think, in these. Very nice early Mark III Cavalier SRI. Cavalier, the future now. I have got a review of the Mark III Cavalier already on the channel. It's a very late one. It's a classic from 95. Also got a preface like this one, a 92 coming up. I filmed in September, so don't worry about that. Be a bit fast, be, be a bit, bit slower than this one though. Very nice Chevette um, estate here. A facelift one. 1981-82 registration. This looks a lot more luxurious than the Chevette I filmed back in September at Great British Car Journey at the same time as the uh, Cavalier. Um, wow, what model is this? I don't know. Then we've got uh, Manta B. These were very similar to the Mark 1 Cavalier Coupe. We saw, as you can see, the same basic body shape. They made these right away through to 1988 when they um, discontinued. I think the Calibra came up the next year. So yeah, 87, 88, this is the 2-litre injection model. They never fitted the six-cylinder engine to these for some reason, which they sort of should have done, really, I think. Ooh, an Opal Monza. That looks rather tasty, viewers. Three-litre engine, which I should have gone into the Manta, really, but never mind, you got it in the Monza. There's the GSE, which is the sporty one. This is the uh, um, A2 version, I think they call these. Be about sort of 84, something like that, maybe an 83. Can we see the Digi Dash? No, because the car's not on. Never mind. You know, we will uh, just have to cope, won't we? Then we've got um, a Senator B. It's a 3 litre 24 valve. Very nice views. This is a 92. Ooh, that's got a sort of nice olive interior as well. Mm, all the executive luxury. Plus an auto, you could get a manual as well. Look at that, yeah, cam in head engine again. Something sort of in the sort of spiritual sort of um, following of that is this uh, 2007 Vauxhall VSR, obviously built by Holden in Australia, with a very, very large 6 litre V8 engine. Very, very fast. But these were very popular back in the day. I mean, now they, they are. They can't really sort of buy these cheaply at all. Um, this one's got an automatic. I wonder if you get a manual for one as well. Fastest Vauxhall ever made. I'm not surprised. Generally wants to go sideways. I've driven a Monaro, which was before this, but uh, this is it came a bit later. And yes, another Lotus Carlton, of course, with um, the crazy 3.6 litre engine, six-speed gearbox out of a Corvette. Yeah, twin turbo. What is it like? 350 horsepower more. This one looks like it's been tuned. It's got even more, definitely an outer barn stormer. Most certainly. And then we've got another Manta B. Left hand drive this one. It's 
1980 to 81 plate. It's a Manta 400, it's a normal one. As you can see, you, you could buy a, a Manta B and Cavalier Coupe at the same time. Um, very confusing sort of situation where both, both Opel and Vauxhall brands were available in this country. This one is a 1.9 SR Berlinetta, registered in 1978. Original and unrestored. That looks ever so nice. Doesn't it? Really good. It's an automatic one. Manta A. Again, right-hand drive. Because you could get both Opel and Vauxhall over here. This is the SR model. I mean, these are stupidly rare now. I mean, much more popular in some like Germany even over here. We had, you know, the Capris, which sort of <laughs> kind of rivaled these. But, um, yeah, didn't really catch on in the same way over here at all. 1982, Citroën, de Chevaux, the Cisse Special, Bleu Lagune. And then um, Ripple Bonnet 2CV, much earlier. 1957 and we've got um, something else here that's for sale 56 Slough 2 CV I can't remember when the Slough factory closed I think it was in the early 60s but yeah Citroen front drive a sort of big logo there um, tiny bit more luxurious but not really luxurious. Just the bumper's different. I didn't notice that. The bumper's actually from an Austin A30. How strange. Yeah, look at that. On the right hand one, it's all canvas. You actually got an opening boot lid on the British one. So, De Cheval Club. Um, I presume this is a 79 to 80 on a V. BB602, I think, by now. Um, this is, it doesn't say, but well, there we go, it's saying 1985. It's an early Dolly. Not really my kind of thing, particularly, dears, but um, we know a certain gentleman at this event who very much likes them and he shall remain currently nameless. Such a lightweight specials. So many 2CV based kit cars, things like that. What is this? It's a, oh, it's a Manx, okay. One of the first kits produced in 1991, although it, obviously the original car uh, would have been made in the early 80s, 81, 82. design isn't it we've got sort of various other bits from other cars in this like the um, Morris Marina door handles things like that which are on everything we've got another one this has got a Mark IV Escort steering wheel in it bizarre um, it's a Lomax built in 92 obviously on an earlier chassis um, Pembleton 2CV based kit car. It's interesting. Is that another little low mark? Red Nong sort of ready to shape, I could be wrong. And then an H van. 1961. I don't think they were ever officially sold over here actually, from memory. Um, might have been, but I don't think I've ever seen a right hand drive one. Um, then a, uh, a Deus. The um, Palace model. Yeah. This is the 71. Right hand drive, wow. Right hand drive DSs are exceptionally rare now. Really rare. There is Mr. Mark Parr from the Mark on Motoring Channel in the middle of an interview. We will leave him to it. 2001 Citroën Saxo VTR. Why is it. Okay, what's going on here? Why does it say it's 2003? I have a feeling that that um, 
this is Citroen UK press registration then. Citroen based and ready for many of them, not, not now, but they were over time. It's unmolested VTR. Goodness me, that's a rare thing. These things have been modified extensively. Still got um, though, the old um, facelift Citroen AX heater and ventilation controls in there though. Mmm, an SM. Very nice viewers. With a Maserati six cylinder engine. 72. Supplied originally French market. We've got those um, spheres there for running a lot of the systems. The LHM that you've put in those. 1974 Citroën Ami Super. Why has that got a P plate there? I am confused by certain things. You had a plate from sort of 75, 76. I don't know what's going on there. So we got Traction Avant going on here. I bet look at the information board. Oh, right hand drive one. That's a very, very rare. Uh, oh, it's a Paris built right hand drive. First day was an English diplomat who had driven a normal while working in Paris. So he ordered he ordered um, the right hand drive one. It's actually made for him. Very late Traction Vert 56. That's one of the uh, days was already out, actually. 11 Ligier. 37 Traction 11B. 55 Traction Vert Normal. Only 55. Still not very normal, really, is it? Though? Not by the sounds of most cars that were made at the time. Another right hand driver. This is a slough bill. Yes, it is. Only a few coupes were made of slough. We've even got a dicky seat at the back of here. It's a 38, this one. They really just did their own thing, didn't they, Citroën? So we got some more Corvettes here. Do we have any information boards? Am I going to have to wander around in ignorance again? Ignorance it is. I think that's a C1. That one. And then we've got um, 66 and Nassau Blue. Isn't there another Nassau Blue Corvette over there? I'm confused, viewers. That one's a convertible, though. You have one to coupe. Um, 81, 82, call that Stingray, C3, that's that, C3. Ooh, information sheet, excellent. Ah, it's an 82, this one. The Corvette Collector Edition. Bowling Green, Kentucky, of course, where they were made. This one, uh, I've got no idea, it's a Belgian plate on there. And we've got an information sheet, excellent. Um, this is 1988 special edition for the 35th anniversary. We have crossfire fuel injection in there. No, it doesn't say that. I think this is probably the early 2000s, this call that. Thank you, whoever gave me information sheet. Yeah, 2003. 50th anniversary edition. See from the uh, seats there. And then an another later one. Is this the one with a seven speed gearbox yet or not? Because you can get both manual and little automatic Corvette. Uh, build sheet, excellent, good. Better look at the other side, that'd be better. No, 2011, not quite yet. Next generation, I think, had the uh, option of the seven speed manual. Let's take a look at this one then. You could buy these. Um, yes, there we go. Seven speed manual. the uh, C7 still left hand drive even though you could buy from over here 
and then this is the current generation, Elan and Motors, one of the only two dealerships in the country I think that you can buy Corvettes at at the moment. This one, there's a 73 plate, so bang up today, right hand drive, uh, I don't know how much they are today, but um, there we go, someone's um, representing all generations of the Corvette, because we are now on the 70th anniversary. So Mustang Owners Club of Great Britain here. It's one of the previous generation models. Um, to help exactly identify it, be some point around 2005, 2006, I think. So that's the Shelby version. And another Shelby version, Shelby GT350. I'm assuming those came out around 1966. This has probably been imported from somewhere. Um, look at this, wow. Father rebuilt the car to California. All these numbers, loads and loads of numbers. It's been in storage for a while, I take it. So there's the um, the Super Snake, that one. 66. Another one of that generation here. Another Shelby. Ah, oh, someone's left me an information sheet this time. Thank you very much, whoever you are. Uh, it's a 2009 uh, GT500 KR, whatever that means. Oh, it actually says on the side. Um, interesting. Jersey. 67, 68 Mustang Fastback. We're just getting into sort of bullet territory or something like this. Very, very shiny one. And then, buying up to date, um, I think Ford Press Card 2023, Ford Motor Company Limited. What sort of power do we have in one of these? Mustang California Special, 10 speed automatic, 450 PS. I bet that's very fast views. Well, I don't think any of these particularly are um, mini-based kit cars. Turner Ranger, 1975, Austin A35 steering boxes, front and rear, four-wheel steering. Could just it's like it's more like a forklift truck, that thing. Um, 1971, Seaver Moonbug. Seaver is in the Seaver Edwardian from Doctor Who. Yes, I think so. Wow, I didn't realize they made those two. What is this? Um, somebody who has got time, which I haven't got at the moment, look that registration up on um, one of the MOT checks or something. TRR scab, mini scab. I have a mini scab. Uh, this thing, a jib. Is that really what it's called? A jiminy. Uh, excellent. I suppose that's good. 77, 78. The card base on this. Um, TRR Scamp, and then this is. I don't know what this is. This looks a bit like the, cha the Shadow Jeep thing from uh, the UFO, but it's a Stimson. It's a high of those. Stimson Scorcher was that weird sort of um, motorcycle type uh, thing. 72 73. It's a gentleman from the Oscars Garage YouTube channel, isn't it? Back in there. But we don't interrupt what people are doing most of the time, viewers. We just get on. Um, Northwest Kit Car Owners Group, GT40 um, style kit there, based on something from the early 80s. One of these Ultimas. Is that a real Ultima GTR? Ultima Can Am, 6.3 V8. I bet that's a bit of a handful in the wet. Um, one of these sort of Cobra kit car type things. Milli Vanilli. And then it looks like a Suzuki Santana, but I don't think that is. It says Rickman on the front, whatever that means. Uh, I've never heard of those before. Ever. So, the uh, Renault Alpine Owners Club. Alpine A110 here. I'm not sure these are actually sold over here officially. Um, but some of them have ended up here. This one, 71, 72. 
that sort of beautiful bright blue colour so many even came in. I don't know what this little thing in here is. If this is a modified A110 or is this something else entirely? Um, I'm not sure. And then, yeah, what brand new ones. Um, Hello. Weirdly, Renault and Alpine, their cars are registered at Rickmansworth, but they always carry ports and plates on them because I think they ha imported into Southampton to the same registration area as Portsmouth. And then they have a sort of depot where they, that they um, prepare them and become off the chip. I think that's the way it works. Anyway, uh, San Remo 73 edition. Available now, the Alpine Centre in Banbury. Strange colour on the roof, isn't it? Another uh, A110 here. That's um, the uh, old Rouen area. It's actually where my, the French side of my family's from, is up in near Rouen. And this is uh, ooh, isn't it? A110S, a bit more power, I can see. Uh, 71. That one. Lovely. So we've got uh, some Twingos here, 1996. Twingo Special. I didn't realise we could have a 1.6 150 brake horsepower engine in a Twingo, but there we go. Obviously, we didn't get them over here anyway. Uh, crazy. It's the Renault K type engine. It's in a lot of cars. Um, one of the cars I've tested with the K type engine is a began Classic from 1999, but it's to, to build from the fuel power channel. Another racy Twingo here. Um, that'll be quicker than um, the original one which came out in 92 they came out with the old Cleon font engine in this case the engine's in the back a bit loud mm, very nice Renault 12 TL 1974-75 registration with a little rotating Renault 12 on the back parcel shelves very basic looking car we've got more rotating stuff there as well more Renault 12s of course, this car lived for many, many years, the Dacia, with various different model names over in Romania, but this one is, uh, I think they're a 1.3. Um, and that is a 75. Wonderful. Once again, we find Mr. Parr from Marpa motoring in his natural habitat with um, Renault branded merchandise on. Interesting. Renault 4, 84, 85 registration. Uh, this one's won some awards. I forget that these are made, I think it's 91 these are discontinued, which is absolutely insane. How long have they lived for? I think 30 years. Renault 16, very rare in this country. Very nicely got, very advanced. Front wheel drive hatchback, 1965. This one is a 71, it's a TL. Just don't see these around at all, do you? The driver's really 16, actually, it'll be, uh, be good fun. 65, I think this is a Renault 8 from memory. Right hand drive UK car, I assume. And then we've got um, pickup over here as well. I forget they were called the, um, the F4 78 79 registration. Make sure we don't fall over here, viewers. Yeah, original right-hand drive again. They as tasty as they were in the uh, the uh, chicken song by this particular image. It's Renault 4. Now this is something, but I don't think they made officially a Astra Mark II GTE Estate. Uh, red top, I assume, in here. 
I should have made one there, because that looks absolutely fantastic. I think those are original GT wheels. I can't remember whether you actually have those wheels painted that colour as standard day. The 1990 to 91. Another GTE. Again with some modifications. So what engine is that one? Somebody tell me in the comment section below if that's a original engine or it's something else. Do we have a DigiDash viewers? Yes, but it's not on at the moment. That looks rather quick. I really want to drive a Mark II. I've driven a Mark one, several Mark 3s, but never a Mark 2. I'd love to drive a Mark 2 Astro. Doesn't matter if it's GT or not. 2023, 30th anniversary of the Peugeot 306. And uh, this one is a GTI 6, 1998, 1999, Phase 2. 2023, the 40th anniversary of the Peugeot 205. Um, Phase Slift 1, 1991, 1992. See what one of those I have. This is an forbidden fuel one. Oh, it's an automatic. Yes, of course, I've driven one of these. It's a 95 the automatic one I drove, which is very close to the end of uh, UK imports in 96. 205 XS, not a GTI. I'm very carefully chosen so that they <laughs> don't just add to the enormous number of 205 GTIs that are here. The XS was at 1.4, I think. This is a very late pre faced F8990. And the Peugeot 504 Coupe Estate thing? Goodness me, I didn't even know this existed. Wow. Um, you learn something new uh, every day, viewers. I have been educated and informed. 504 Brake Riviera. Oh gosh. That's absolutely crazy. 71 it is. And then a 40, sorry, 203 this is. Um, Porsche 48, don't know what year that one is, but I do remember them sort of vaguely. Bit of a change of pace here, viewers. We've got some uh, Volkswagen splitties and things like that here. Worth a lot of money now, these. Only 66, that one is. Completely picnic set. Uh, one of the vans, that's presumably wanting some paint. It's a 57 panel van. Built in 57 in Hanover and then shipped to Rhodesia. Now Zimbabwe. 1966 Volkswagen ice cream van. I'm hungry now, viewers. I think it's almost time for lunch. Um, I wonder if I can actually buy an ice cream here, or this is all for display. It's all for display. 66, uh, Belgium. We've got another one here, there's another 66. This was um, actually uh, British Switzerland, and presumably a converted right hand drive. And then we've got um, another splitty here with this sort of pop top. Camper, that's a very nice condition actually. That the sort of thing people like to see at shows, and if you can't afford the real thing, you can have one of those two. That's what you can have. Lovely E type here on the uh, Sporting Bears stand. Uh, this one is a 65 4.2. That is in beautiful condition. Unfortunately, we haven't got time to ride the Sporting Bears experience today, viewers. Um, I do hope you'll forgive me. We've got a lot more shambolic shuffling to do instead. Including some Clios. Oh, sorry, Twingos. I do apologise. It is getting late in the day, and this is part 20, so uh, it's just the way it goes, unfortunately. Um, these, I think, were registered like 92, 93, these ones. They were officially imported by a handful of dealers. I mean, the two here, obviously, very much um, <laughs> registered at the same time. The blue ones, purple one, I should say, has been recently been in the iDriver Classic channel. This one's a really, really late one. It's been right at the end of Mark 1 production. I've driven a very early Mark 2. It was on a 57 plate, so right at the end. Um, the Twingo Collector. 
they made for sort of 15 years or so for Mark 1 Twin Gates. Never made in right-hand drive, so they couldn't be able to engineer them for us. And then the Twin Gates Spring, uh, 70, sorry, sorry, 97, 98, this one. That was the Enterprise Edition van. I've never seen one of those before. Anyway, that's been quite enough for part 20 of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2023 NEC Classic Motor Show. We've got a couple more parts to come, I think, and then we'll be over. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like us video leave a comment below, and um, see you in part 21 for more incorrect information.